question 161 the optimum ph at which proteins are acted upon by pepsin is 6.8 1.8 7.1 8.3 the proteins in the stomach are acted upon by the pepsin in acidic ph and the acidic ph is provided by hcl in the stomach and the ph which is optimal for the action of pepsin is 1.8 the proteins when acted upon by pepsin in this optimum pH are broken down into proteoses and peptones. Thus the optimum pH is 1.8. The correct answer here would be option number 2 1.8. The remaining options are pH in the alkaline range in which pepsin cannot function. The correct answer is option number 2 1.8. Question 162. The total number of premolars in human dentition are 8, 4, 12, 6. The human dental formula of 2, 1, 2, 3 upon 2, 1, 2, 3. This represents the arrangement as well as the number of teeth in each half of upper and lower jaw. And teeth are arranged in the order of incisors canine, premolars and molars and since that is right half and left half if we multiply this by 2 we get the total number of teeth. With respect to the total number of premolars in human dentition the upper jaw have a right half and a left half and two premolars are present on each side of this upper jaw. Similarly in the lower jaw as well two in the lower right and two in the lower left side. The total number of premolars would be 8. The correct answer here is option number 1, 8. Question 163. The maximum volume of air a person can breathe in after a forced expiration is about 1100 ml, 8000 ml, 500 ml, 4500 ml. We have to know what volume of air a person can take in or breathe in after he has forcibly expired. If you look at the representation of the lung volumes and capacity, then we know this is the tidal volume. This is the maximum limit a person can inspire, represented by inspiratory capacity. That is an addition of tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume. And similarly, the maximum a person can expire is represented by EC, that is expiratory capacity, an addition of tidal volume and expiratory reserve volume. And if we take up inspiratory capacity, tidal volume and expiratory capacity, then we get a functional capacity which humans can use to inspire or expire called as the vital capacity. Now after the person has forcibly expired, he has reached this point after which he can inspire an amount of air that is equivalent to this vital capacity. Remember the residual volume cannot be used in this case. Thus the vital capacity also represents a volume of air that a person can breathe in after he has forcibly expired represented by IRV plus tidal volume plus ERV which ranges from 4000 to 4600 ml of air. And this is seen in an adult normal human and depending upon the age, sex, height of the individual it varies in this range. The correct answer here would be option number 4 that is 4500 ml. Answer is option 4. Question 164. Select the incorrect statement with respect to oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve in humans. It is sigmoid or S-shaped. Low partial pressure of oxygen will shift the curve to right. Low hydrogen concentration is favorable for shifting of curve to left. And shifting of curve towards left indicates dissociation of oxygen from hemoglobin. We're looking for an incorrect statement here. Let's analyze statements one by one with respect to oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. Statement one that it is sigmoid or S-shaped, it's a correct statement. Statement two that low partial pressure of oxygen will shift the curve to right. This is also a true statement. The right shift of this curve is seen in the case of low partial pressure of oxygen, high partial pressure of CO2, high concentration of hydrogen ions 
and when the temperature is higher. The statement number 2 is a correct statement. Statement 3 that low H plus concentration is favorable for shifting of curve to the left. This is also a true statement. The high concentration leads to right shifting of this curve. So low H plus concentration would lead to left shifting of this curve. Statement 4. Shifting of curve towards left indicates dissociation of oxygen from hemoglobin. This is incorrect. The left shift of oxygen dissociation curve indicates the increased oxygen affinity for hemoglobin. Whereas the right shifting indicates the dissociation and not left. Thus option number 4 is incorrect and hence our answer, answer is 4. Question 165, which of the following is mismatched with respect to human heart? We're looking for an incorrect match with respect to human heart. Option 1, cardiac cycle, 72 cycles in 60 seconds. This is a correct match. The normal heart rate is 72 and, and each heartbeat represents one cardiac cycle. So this is a correct match. Match number 2, chordae tendine, prevent collapse of AV valves into the atria. This is also a correct match during ventricular systole if these AV valves are not secured by this thin cord-like structures called chordae tendine, then these valves can collapse into the atria. Match 3, second heart sound due to opening of semilunar valves. This is incorrect. The second heart sound, that is the dub sound or S2, is produced due to closure of semilunar valves and not opening. So this is incorrect match. Option number 4, SA node generates maximum number of action potential. This is a correct match, thus it is called as the pacemaker. The mismatch and the answer here is option number 3. Mm -hmm.